Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to teach you how you can set up third person movement in Unity. So I downloaded this character from the Unity Asset Store. I'll have a link to it down below. I'm not good enough at art quite yet to make this myself. And what we're going to do in this video is set up our camera so that's a good third person view. And then set up our code so that we can move our character around. And then I'll probably make another video since this asset came with animations showing you how you can set up your animators in Unity. So to start off, we need to get our camera angle right first. And what I'm going to do right away is take this main camera that comes in the default scene and drag it onto our character. Then I'm going to go into my scene view, play around with it a little bit until... and we'll use that for now. Uh, as you can see, you can see your preview down there of what it's going to look like. So I'll go over the left shoulder for this one. Uh, you could always go over the right shoulder too. And you can always play around with the camera angle later on too. We just want to get a baseline for now. That's looking good. Um, and now let's create our script. So I'm going to make a scripts folder here to keep things a little bit organized. And in this folder, I'm going to create a new script and let's call it player movement. And right away, I'm going to go to my character here and <laughs> attach it because sometimes I forget to actually add the script and wonder what's going wrong. So let's open up that script in Visual Studio. All right, so the first thing we're going to do in our script is set up a couple variables. Let's get our movement set up first, and then we'll worry about the rotation. So to do that, I'm going to make a variable here, and we'll call it move speed. Uh, it is a float too. And then in our update method here, we're going to track what keys out of WASD are being pressed down using the built-in axes. Uh, so we're going to keep track of those using a couple more floats in here. Uh, we'll do float, and we'll call it move x. Uh, we'll be our input dot get axis and we'll do horizontal so this will be our so this will be our x movement uh, variable and then we'll do the same thing for the y and we'll say input again dot get axis and this time it'll be vertical so horizontal will track when you're pressing a or d uh, maybe even the arrow keys too left and right uh, and then move y Vertical will track W and S and the up and down arrow keys, I think. So we'll do our side to side movement first. We'll do transform dot position. That'll get our current transform of the object this is on. And then add transform dot right. Multiply that by our move X. So if we're holding down D, it'll be one. If we're holding down S, That'll return negative ones, then it'll be actually transformed left, uh, if you're holding left. And then we'll multiply that by our move speed. Oops. Here we go. And to make sure our movement is consistent, we'll do times time dot delta time. And then for our forward and back movement, we'll do kind of the same thing. Transform dot position plus equals transform dot forward this time. And then we'll multiply it by move y this time. Uh, move speed again we can use. And again, multiply by time dot delta time to keep it consistent. All right, let's save that. All right, back in Unity here. Uh, there's a couple things we still have to do before I forget, or at least one thing. We have to set our move speed here. Uh, so this will be kind of up to you depending on how big your scene is. Uh, let's just try a speed of 10 right now. Again, that's something you can always change though. And let's click play and see how this is working. So we've got our camera set up there. We hold W, see our character is moving forward. It's getting closer to the edge of the plane I have set up. S, we go backwards. And then uh, A and B side to side. And of course if you hold like D and W, we're going kind of on a diagonal. Same with S and A, so everything seems to be working how we want it to. But we also want to be able to look around too. Now let's work on our rotation. The first thing I'm going to do is add actually another component to our character here. It'll just be an empty game object, and we'll just call it look position, because this is where our camera is going to be looking towards when we rotate it around our player. And we're just going to put it up a little bit higher, so it's around mid to head area. That's looking good. I could zoom in a little bit too, that might help, but I think that'll be okay. And then we'll just drag our camera under that so that it's now a child of our look position. 
Now if we rotate our look position, our camera will rotate too, and we can see all around the different parts of our character here. Now back in Visual Studio, I'm going to create a new variable here, and we'll make another float, and this time we'll call it sensitivity. Uh, I did add a little comment there saying that that's our movement part, so let's add one saying that this is our rotation section as well, just to keep things a little bit organized. And I'm actually going to make another variable here too for our look position. I almost forgot about that. And we'll just make it a transform and call it look pause. So now in our rotation section here in the update method, we need to get our mouse position, our X and Y mouse positions. So to do that, we'll store a couple more floats here. We'll call one mouse X and it'll be input dot get axis and mouse X. And for Y, we'll do float mouse Y equals input uh, get axis and mouse Y. Now we also want these to be affected by our sensitivity. So we'll just do that now. We'll just multiply them by our current sensitivity. So first I'm going to make sure that our character rotates. And I guess this will control the Y rotation of our camera as well, since it is a child of our character. And then I'm going to create a couple more variables to keep track of where our rotation is currently at. So we'll just call those, we'll make them floats, and we'll call them rot x and rot y. And then this part might seem a little counterintuitive, but we're gonna do rot y plus equals mouse x. Since the direction our mouse is moving in the x direction like this, we'll actually be controlling our y rotation. You could call these different things if it makes more sense to you too. Um, and then for our rot x, we will add our mouse y. So a little switcheroo there, but I promise it'll work in the end. We also want to make sure that our x rotation is clamped, so we're not doing any weird rotations that will make it look awkward. So to do that, we'll just do rot x equals math f dot clamp, and then pass in our rot x and make sure that it's going to be between negative 90 and 90. Then we're ready to set our rotation of our character now. So to do that, we'll just do transform dot Euler angles since we're storing Euler angles, and then we'll just set it equal to the new vector three, which will be zero, our Y rotation, so rot Y and zero. Obviously this will only control our Y rotation, we'll get to the X rotation in a second. But before we do that, let's just save this and let's go test to make sure that this is working the way we want it to. So first things first, let's set our sensitivity. I don't really know what a good number is, let's try 100 and see if that's going to be crazy. Uh, and then we also need to put in our look rotation here that we made not too long ago. So I'm going to drag my game back to here so it's a little bit bigger and let's click play and see what happens. You can see I'm dragging my right mouse around now. It's pretty sensitive, but uh, it's doing the job. We can tone that down a little bit in a sec. And now our character will always be moving in the way that we're looking since we used transform.forward earlier for our player movement. And that is looking good. But now we want to be able to rotate around the character too a little bit so we can see a little bit lower. So let's get that set up now. So back in our script here, We'll just use our look pause transform that we set up not too long ago. We'll do look pause dot Euler angles again, and we'll make it a new vector three. And this time we'll pass in our rot X for the X, our rot Y for the Y, and zero. Now back in our game, I've put the sensitivity down to 25 because 100 was definitely way too high. And let's see how it is. You can see that our camera movement seems kind of inverted or looking up and down. And that's because it is. To fix that, we can go back into our script. Pretty simple fix. Instead of adding our mouse wide to our X rotation, we actually want to subtract it like that. That'll invert it again. Invert the invert, which should make it work the way we want it to. So now if I'm looking up, I'm looking up. If I'm looking down, I'm looking down. I can move around 
and it seems to be working good. Our character isn't rotating uh, with the up and down either, which is good because that would just look awkward. So I think everything is working properly. The only thing that's looking kind of awkward now is that there's no animation set up so far. So in my next video, I'll be showing how you can set up your animators so that this character will run or walk when you're moving and stand in his idle position kind of like he is now uh, when you're standing still and maybe play around with some other stuff too, some other animations. Hey everyone, it's future me. I forgot about something that makes the movement a little bit awkward if you don't have it, but it's a pretty simple thing to add. Uh, as you might have seen when I was doing those demos there, right now uh, you can still see the cursor on the screen so it kind of feels weird to see that move around. Like if you want to go all the way around you have to drag it all the way across your screen. So there's a simple fix for that. Uh, just go back into your script here and in the start method we can do cursor dot lock state equals cursor lock mode and get locked. Just like that. So now if we save that, go back into our scene here. Now you can see the cursor is not on the screen anymore, but we can still move around, uh, still move our camera around. Um, and it just feels a lot less awkward having the cursor just floating around on the screen. Um, but that'll be it for this one. I hope you enjoyed. If this helped you out at all, make sure you leave a like, maybe subscribe. Of course, if you have any questions about it, let me know in the comments or any other tutorials you would like to see. But yeah. I will see you guys in the next one where we will learn a little bit about animators in Unity. Take care.